You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. So straight up, I have the all new 2023 Nissan X-Trail in its middle of the barrel STL front wheel drive trim. It's Nissan's fourth generation of the X-Trail. It sits in a category with some very popular SUVs like the Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Tucson, Mazda CX-5 and Kia Sportage. Where the X-Trail was falling behind some of its rivals recently, this is the all new model we've been waiting for. So are you ready for a review? Well, I am, so let's get into it. Let's start with the looks, just for a change. The front features Nissan's B-Motion grille with chrome elements and slimline LEDs. Although the front has been significantly modernized from previous editions, it is not as sharp as some of the other models coming out from like Toyota or Hyundai. Although it's got the sharp lines, it's well teamed with curves. I like the mix. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a different design, a little more rounded than the others and less aggressive in nature. The flat tone Nissan badge also looks nice. The side is fairly simple and boxy, but with some nice aerodynamic angles from the front bonnet to the back. It features a dolphin fin C-pillar and in general reminds me a lot of the Outlander. Even though it is the mid-range STL model, there's a nice set of 18-inch alloys. The back also comes together nicely, and I'm especially liking the current Nissan badging. It just looks clean, simplistic, again, not overly aggressive. It just kind of appeals to me. I even like the realistic spaced out way the X-Trail is written here. The bottom bar is raised and this cladding gives off the impression of some rugged capability. You can opt to go two-tone and pair up some colours with the black tone roof. Under the bonnet there are two engines to choose from and I'm quite liking how it's colour coordinated in here. A 1.5 litre turbo e-power option only available in the top TI and TIL trims. The other one is the one we have here, and it's likely going to be the most popular, although I would definitely like to try the other one to see which would be my personal favourite. It's a 2.5 litre four-cylinder petrol engine. It produces 135 kilowatts of power and 244 newton metres of torque. Fuel consumption for the two-wheel drive is listed at 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Now, it is an interesting primary engine choice from Nissan, especially in 2023. They have improved upon their 2.5 litre engine, giving it better performance. But given that many other manufacturers, actually country legislations, are moving towards smaller engines with hybrids and turbos, etc., it's interesting that Nissan is sticking with this 2.5 litre. I mean, it feels like they're tailoring to a very traditional Aussie market. But given early sales and current interest, it does still seem to be valid. This engine allows for a larger two-ton towing capacity. The most notable thing I immediately felt when driving is the responsiveness of the car. Even in eco mode, it's quite jumpy when you hit the accelerator. You get that instant response from the 2.5 litre engine, but it's tuned to be extra responsive indeed. It's not exactly sporty responsiveness, it's more like eco beaver. All new composite materials have been used to reduce the weight of the car and improve efficiency. I felt it when opening the door to get into the car, it just feels super light. The steering wheel feels light and easy to move, and the ride itself feels comfortable and assured on most road types. Visibility is great throughout the cabin in all windows, and the side mirrors are very big, so it's also great. Maybe not as aesthetically pleasing, but hey, safety first. We get the three driving modes here, eco, normal, and sport, pretty standard. Sports mode feels pretty amped up, not exactly smooth, but you do have the options to control it with the paddle shifters. Honestly, for everyday driving, the sports mode is almost too much. It just kind of doesn't allow you to relax into your drive. I don't say that too often. Ooh. Here's where it's a little different. Eco and normal offer more than enough responsiveness. I was very impressed with the Nissan Pro Pilot actually. So it holds your lane and your speed and adaptive cruise control based on the car in front of you too. I feel like that feature was something that was missing from Nissan in the past. So it's great to see that they've added it here. The interior is spacious and well laid out. So I've got synthetic leather accented seats and the material quality is actually really nice throughout the cabin. I don't love the color combination here. So we've got a grayish mixed with brown and then black. So personally, I would be going to the TI, which is the next one up, which offers you a full light gray leather interior. <sighs> Much cooler. Being the STL model means we get the smaller eight inch display screen. Higher trims get a much nicer and more deserved 12.3 inch display. 
This screen is just smaller than what I would like to see in 2023. It does have all the features of the 12.3 inch ones, which were in the higher trims, but it just doesn't even look like it fits the space. I mean, personally, I'd rather pay the extra money and just have the bigger screen. The instrument cluster here is partially digital with analog dials. Higher trims are fully digital. Up front, there is a USB-A and a USB-C. Nice to get the option of both. Actually, this whole center console is just really nicely designed. The gear shift selector is quite aesthetically pleasing and nice in the hand. They've added the storage underneath too, and nice materials, again. The upfront design is totally ergonomic with comfort in mind. There are nice armrests and great little cubbies around the place. The driver's seat even on this STL model is 10-way adjustable with lumbar support. The front passenger here only gets manual seat adjustment. Now, this is another good back seat. So you've got plenty of headroom and leg room. The knee angle is a little high, but that's okay. Um, air vents, USB-C and USB. And the seats actually slide forward. <laughs> um, so if you've got something bigger you want to put in the boot and you're not using the back seat, you've got that option to do that. This one also does. Wait, wait. And the armrest does come out with the cup holders and little storage. And interestingly, it goes straight through to the boot, which I don't know if I've seen that before. The boot space is huge and best in class at 585 litres. Yeah, so the boot is great. And this is my favourite kind of boot blind with how it removes, just comes out. It's nice that it's light as well, which will help keep any groceries in the back of the car cooler. And interestingly, the floor can move up or down. So you can have a flat surface and store something underneath, or if you want to, you can move it down and give you a little bit more volume. And there is a full-size spare, which is nice. I have the five-seater two-wheel drive here, but there is a seven-seater all-wheel drive available in this trim. If you're looking for a good, well-rounded selection of safety features, then I would forget the bottom trim. Most of the best features start with this STL, and they are intelligent around view monitor with moving object detection, pro pilot, which is really good, front and rear parking sensors, intelligent forward collision warning, intelligent emergency braking with junction assist and pedestrian cyclist detection, intelligent rear automatic braking, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot warning, intelligent blind spot intervention, intelligent cruise control, traffic sign recognition, and a bunch of other safety goodies. Drive away pricing for the new X-Trail starts at just over 40,400 for the ST trim, this STL trim is just over 47,000 and the top of the range TIL trim starts at just over $57,300. With the price of new cars continually climbing and shocking us, the price of this STL isn't actually too bad. The X-Trail has been modernized enough to keep it competitive with its main rivals. It has that 2.5 litre engine, which feels odd in these times. But there are others in the same category like the Subaru Forester and RAV4, which are also 2.5 litre offerings. And as mentioned, there is still a place, well, at least a demand for these kinds of engines. It is interesting because Nissan was some of the early innovators with electric technology, with the LEAF coming in in 2010. Although the next generation didn't come into 2017. So it's like, why are we not seeing more of this technology across the range? Perhaps they only do it every seven years or so. So my overall impressions for this STL X-Trail is that this trim offers pretty much everything you'd want for a reasonable price. I would say that the one big thing that holds it back is that infotainment screen, especially from when some other competitors are offering the biggest screens across all trim levels. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So what do you guys think about this 2.5 litre? Is there still room for it in the Australian market? Clearly there is, but is it what you would choose? We're interested to know, leave your comments below and we'll see you next time. Peace.